वक्रतुंड महाकाल सूर्य कोटि निर्विघ्न कुरु में देव सर्व कार्य सर्वदा गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल डिग्नेटरीज गेस्ट डेलीगेट्स विद ग्रेट जॉय एंड इमेंस एक्सल्टेशन I feel privileged to extend my warm welcome to all present here for the second international conference NIC 2021 on resilience for sustainability revisiting management practices and strategizing for the future Before we begin with our conference let us start with Saraswati Vandana may I welcome Ms Niharika student of BCom honors fourth semester for Saraswati Vandana magnificent vandana the school of management and liberal studies at the north cap university offers mba bba bcom honors ba honors in psychology ba honors in economics and phd programs in management and allied disciplines school of management has been progressive in its approach and kept abreast of the latest trends and industry requirements as a progressive student friendly institution ncco has introduced programs like mba with specialization in business analytics bba with specializations in digital marketing and business analytics experienced faculty at som using innovative teaching methods make learning fun and engaging with help of smart classrooms multimedia aids learning management systems and blended learning pedagogy let us have a glimpse of the north cap university yes ma'am yes. with us we have eminent personality professor premvrat who is a person with clear expressions broad thinking patterns and augmentative way of carrying work professor premvrat is the chairman board of governors of indian institute of technology ism dhanbad with additional charge as chairman BOG of IIT Mandi an outstanding academic professor premvrat is the pro chancellor professor of eminence and chief mentor at the north cap university gurugram formerly itm university gurugram just prior to joining itmu as the vice chancellor in september 2011 he was professor of eminence at the management development institute mdi gurugram professor vrat was founder director iit roorkee vice chancellor up technical university lucknow professor head center for management studies coordinator applied systems research program dean deputy director and director officiating at iit delhi professor and division chairman of asian institute of technology bangkok he is an honorary professor at iit delhi and distinguished adjunct professor at ait bangkok he was chairman board of governors of wit dehradun a constituent 
Institute of Uttarakhand Technical University. Professor Prem Wirth was an honorary research fellow at the Department of Engineering Production, University of Birmingham, UK, and as an international visiting fellow at University of Western Sydney, Australia. He has extensive experience of more than 52 years in teaching, research, management development and consultancy. He has guided 47 PhD thesis, 118 MTech and 65 BTech major projects on industrial application of systems approach and management science. He has published more than 502 research papers in reputed journals and proceedings of international and national conferences. His research papers have received more than 8048 citations with G index of 88 and maximum citation of a paper as 1563 as per Google Scholar. His research papers now get about 600 citations each year. He has authored, co-authored seven books and completed five sponsored projects and 36 consultancy assignments. His book Productivity Management, a system approach received awards from DMA as well as ISTD. His book Materials Management and Integrated Systems Approach published by Springer is available worldwide both in print and ebook version. He is a fellow of the Indian National Academy of Engineering, National Academy of Sciences, World Academy of Productivity Sciences, ISTE and the IIIE. Recipient of multiple awards and recognitions, Professor Vrath was conferred Doctor of Engineering Honoris Causa by Bundelkhand University. Distinguished Alumnus Award by IIT Kharagpur. Distinguished Service Award by IIT Delhi. Outstanding Contribution Award for National Development by IIT Delhi. Alumni Association. Uttaranchal Ratan Award. Lilligian Gilbreth Award. 15 Best Paper Medals and Prizes. Professor Premrath was honored with the National Systems Gold Medal by the Systems Society of India SSI and honorary member of IIIE, the highest recognition by IIIE. SAE India Foundation bestowed on him the Guru Award for his outstanding contributions. He was conferred the Lifetime Achievement Award at the 18th Annual International Conference of the Society of Operations Management at IIT Roorkee in December 2014. He received Dr. M. C. Puri Memorial Award of ORSI for his outstanding contribution for promotion of operational research in India and Lifetime Achievement Award 2017 by the Indian Institution of Industrial Engineering for outstanding contributions to the industrial engineering profession and the society. Rethink India conferred on him the Visionary Edu Leader of India Award on the 11th December 2017 given by former President late Sri Pranab Mukherjee. He was conferred the Lifetime Achievement Award by Systems Society of India and Dayalbag Educational Institute at DEI Agra on 5th March 2018. UP Chief Minister felicitated him on the 26th July 2019 for his valuable contributions as Vice Chancellor of UPTU during his tenure. He has been on the board of governors of many technical institutions and universities on the editorial boards of many Indian and foreign journals. He was chairman NWRC, AICTE chairman, Program Implementation Committee of National Project on Earthquake Engineering Education, NPEEE, Chairman, Working Group on HRD in IT, Department of IT, Government of India, <laughs> Member, JNU Code, Member of Ad Hoc Task Force, ATF, Independent Director on the Board of Air India, Co-Chairperson, RAC DRDO, member advisory group of experts for technology upgradation in Indian Railways and member executive council of YMCA University of Science and Technology. He was chairman INAE forum on engineering education and is member technology foresight and management of INAE 
and member university court and executive council central university haryana member board of governors of national institute of industrial engineering nitie member task force by moe on engineering education in regional languages and chairman national credit framework by moe i request professor premrat to kindly kindly deliver the keynote thank you, address uh, thank you dr priyanka banerji it perhaps was longer than my address <laughs> uh, well good morning uh, 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 dear delegates and honorable chief guest of the occasion dr m shamsundar from nac uh, guest of honor colonel v uh, colonel venkat from aict uh, our collaborators dr sham vyas uh, uh, university of fraser valley canada india india chef center uh, professor uh, m wal uh, okay uh, professor uh, gesho uh, our representatives from the other uh, participating institutions convener of this conference uh, professor swanji tarora and her organizing team uh, distinguished delegates uh, faculty members of uh, ncu uh, ladies and gentlemen good morning to all of you and it's my uh, ple uh, pleasure to welcome you all on behalf of the north cap university uh, for the second in international conference nic 2021 on the resilience for sustainability revisiting management practices and strategizing for future i compliment the organizing team led by professor swanji tarora and i am ex expressing my gratitude to the collaborating institutions and universities uh, for taking this initiative the theme of this conference is absolutely very very relevant indeed uh, the sustainability has been uh, the major issue uh, after this uh, stg the the sustainable development goals in 2017 but the uh, pandemic and the uh, general volatile business environment which we used to call it a vuca business environment has been made far more uh, uh, uncertain than even vuca world because of the pandemic and therefore it's important in order to achieve the goal of sustainability we need to revisit the strategies of managing our systems and organizations and the key word for doing so is resilience as you know that in a greater the degree of uncertainty associated in managing systems greater is the need for flexibility of approach and the for strategies built in around uh, flexibility and resilience is one such attribute which indeed is critical component uh, for the purpose of uh, obtaining sustainability and therefore in that context i am very pleased uh, uh, to be present in this inaugural session of the second international conference it's a very uh, very apt theme that has been chosen by the school of management and liberal studies uh, as i mentioned the conference is being organized in association with the university of fraser valley canada uh, namadi azikewa university pardon me for my uh, my pronunciation if i'm not able to do so uh, appropriately nigeria and uh, debre tabor university ethiopia as i mentioned the theme is very relevant in the present day world it offers innovative ideas and framework for sustainable strategizing to uh, advance the business by scaling up its positive impact in fact you can look at uh, uh, this as an opportunity by revisiting the manner in which we manage systems and therefore it's an extremely uh, important for us to address on this theme i believe that a very good response has been obtained uh, by the by the people who will be presenting papers in number of uh, parallel sessions today and this would shows that uh, management practitioners academicians and research scholars how to effectively deal with socio ecological systems disruptions to their very operating environments and play an active role in transforming markets towards a sustainable future as i mentioned sustainability has become a buzzword almost for last uh, after the sdgs were given uh, this has been a buzzword and almost everything that we now talk about is hinging around sustainability uh, it's currently used in political platforms business slogans product commercials and many more when it comes to the environment the focus on sustainability utilizing our current resources in a way that avoids uh, uh, 
uh, in a way that the uh, uh, that avoids depleting them for future generations is critical. Uh, yet it's important not to lose sight of the other conservation efforts uh, of the, the concept that help protect the environment. Resilience is not the same as sustainability, nor is substitute, but is a is a is a is a way to counter the negative effect of uncertainties with a view to obtain the the goal of uh, sustainability. The two concepts complement each other. There actually there are cause effect relationship associated with them and the implementation of resilience will only continue to aid the environment when bouncing back from the change has become our reality. Resilience is the, the, the only sustainable future. In understanding the differences between resilience and uh, sustainability, it's important to define them and recognize uh, where they are distinct. The definition of resilience is the capacity of a system, uh, be it an individual, a forest or a city or an economy, an organization to deal with the change and continue to develop. In fact, the, the, the resilience uh, brings agility to the system to come back, uh, quickly adjust to the changes that take place even if they are certain. This definition of sustainability, uh, in fact, uh, uh, the, the, as an ability to meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And if you can see the relationship very clearly, sustainability is to meet your current needs without future generations being de uh, uh, deprived of their needs at that point in time. And, and therefore, based on that, these two concepts, this conference has evolved, are absolutely relevant and linking resilience and sustainability therefore comes down to recognizing where each of the two has its place in making policies for the future. In short, it's going to demonstrate how to make business sense of sustainability, highlighting new approaches and examples that translate sustainability into a strategy with action. The ultimate goal is to provide a path towards a thriving and sustainable future for both business and society. This conference is kept for academicians, strategic, uh, strategy practitioners and decision makers who want to understand why sustainable strategy is important in today's business world and seek actionable business knowledge they can apply in their organizations. It is also meaningful for students and scholars of management and can be used as supplemental text to support traditional graduate as well as undergraduate management courses. Business strategy is complex, particularly in a in a in, in, in a VOCA world. It's complex simply because we have no control of the future or any unseen circumstances, particularly if they are highly volatile, as there are many stakeholders involved in the business. Uh, namely customers, employer, employee, suppliers, manufacturers, security boards, and the other external business environment uh, contained in uh, political, economic, social, and technological environment. You cannot predict the exact intentions, motives, and actions taken on by others within the business ecosystem you operate in. One stakeholder's action can have significant ripple effects throughout this ecosystem, depending how big the rock is that you are throwing into the pond. Although complex, to simplify a good strategy, in my opinion, boils down to five critical questions that companies and leaders must continually revisit and answer. Number one, do we have the right strategic competitive advantage within the current environment for the short as well as the long term? Are we uh, our existing business capabilities in place to support our current and future strategies? Number three, do we understand all the different future scenarios and mitigated them through our risk management uh, uh, policies and concepts? Number four, do our proposed short term and long term strategies meet or exceed the business value proposition against all stakeholders involved? And finally, do we have the right organization and more importantly, the right kind of leadership to carry out the business? business's vision, mission, and uh, direct strategy. Without answering these five critical questions to develop a cohesive executive path, the strategy would fail. So the question becomes, do we have a strategy for uh, your strategy? Uh, you'll need to ask yourself questions similar to these. How often should we be revisiting our practices and strategy? When and how should we look into strategizing for the future? etc. 
while there are many ways to tackle these that will be unique to your own uh, specific situation the four tactics that i see can uh, can immediately be of help which can be implemented to uh, help revisit your strategies a uh, scheduling uh, open quarterly and bi monthly forums for leadership and executives to meet and incorporate trends and best practices or shaping the industry proactively versus reactively responding to the business environment as you know in fact uh, being proactive is always a better way of uh, doing things than being reactive particularly if the, the situation is extremely dynamic creating or improving our formal tactics and processes to gain inputs from the executive board to hold them answerable accountable to make sure the strategies are aligned with the execution and there are no gaps between the strategy and implementation aligning the stakeholders both internal and external so value propositions and understanding current climate and feedback via employee satisfaction and brand perception surveys and finally generating solid communication plans of informing how strategies tie back to the original mission and vision across all business uh, units always down, downstream now is the perfect time to assess, reassess what we have, what has worked well through time and what you can improve on but remember you will always need to keep your mission and vision in the rear view mirror without that platform your strategy is meaningless the strategy is hard to nail down but it is dynamic continuous process where you should constantly be evolving a, pos a position to position yourself with the best competitive advantage you hold against your own competitors in conclusion i hope that the conference uh, will throw light on various aspects of business strategies and their impact on sustainability uh, under the current situation and scenario educational institutions particularly in the engineering and management should not underestimate the role of solid strategic development that communicates the competitive advantage uh, throughout this never ending journey to improve your existing competitive advantage uh, i'm uh, happy to note that the conference has evolved uh, a very good response uh, and a very large number of uh, papers have been received uh, i am sure that the deliberation for the day uh, would definitely bring a greater light in understanding and finding a way out in uh, in a relatively fuzzy business environment that uh, the the current scenario brings us in and would help us in formulating a more appropriate strategies i convey my best wishes for the success of the conference and thank the organizers and the collaborators for allowing me to share some of these concerns thank you very much all the best thank you thank you so much sir for enlightening us and for your words of inspiration with the permission of all the dignitaries i request dr mansi to virtually release the conference proceedings Research Fellow, Research Associate, Research Officer, 
assistant advisor and deputy advisor in different organizations. He has rich experience in teaching, research and academic administration with a good academic record. He has officiated as the director NAC on several occasions and acting director for a brief period. He was a member of executive committee EC, general counsel GC and finance Commi committee FC of NAC, which are the policy making authorities. He was the public information officer, first appellate authority, chief vigilance officer, the chairman of investment committee and purchase committee at NAC. He was the nodal officer for coordinating all the peer team visits in NAC. He is the chairman of publication committee and member of local works committee, building committee at NAC. He is the convener of standing committee of EC at NAC. He is the head of the southern region and chairman of various committees. He has shared the dais with many honorable governors of various states. Also, he has shared dice with several honorable ministers of education and similar dignitaries in different parts of the country. He also shared dice with honorable Lokpal and honorable vice president of India. He is the UGC nominee on the governing body of Yashwant Rao Chavan Institute of Science, Satara, Maharashtra. He has participated as an international expert in training of trainers, accreditors, auditors in Philippines, Nepal, Saudi Arabia and Malaysia. He has participated as an auditor in the audit panel of the Mauritius and Nepal. He has participated as an observer in the QAA team of UK to visit Indian institutions. He was one of the active members of APQN mutual recognition project. He has visited several countries USA, Canada, UK, Spain, France, Australia, New Zealand, Italy, Croatia, Egypt, Philippines, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Singapore, Thailand, Maldives, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, Mauritius, Nepal, Cambodia, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, etc. on various kinds of assignments. He has a unique distinction of coordinating on-site visits to more than 3,200 institutions of higher learning, including universities, affiliated constituent, autonomous colleges, management colleges, professional colleges, educational colleges and research institutes in various parts of the country. He has participated as keynote speaker, guest of honor and chief guest in several seminars, webinars, conferences and workshops, both at national and international level. He is associated with a large number of activities of NAC, including seminars, workshops, orientation programs, brainstorming sessions, assessors training programs, awareness programs, program for member coordinators, accreditation award ceremonies, etc. He has been involved in various academic and administrative activities related to assessment and accreditation and overall planning of the organization, which helps to trigger deliberations among academicians to get their valuable inputs to fine tune NAC's instruments. He has participated as a resource person in number of national and international conferences. He was in charge of the publication wing of the NAC and brought out a number of publications and also contributed articles to books. He has published a few articles in regional dailies and national level journals. He has worked as co co coordinator for the revision of manuals, promotional materials and development of NACs formats and also independently organized various academic activities in different parts of the country. He has actively involved in the statewide analysis of accreditation reports for various states in India, which helps in quality assurance of higher education institutions. He has been presented certificate of appreciation for conducting NAC workshop during 31st annual international conference 2018 Indian Society of, for Dental Research ISDR Indian Division on 30th September 2018. Currently, he is in charge of the Southern Zone of India for organizing and coordinating different academic activities in the zone to take appropriate action plans. 
on behalf of school of management and liberal studies the north cap university i thank him for providing his gracious presence to join us today to enlighten us now i request our distinguished chief guest dr ms shyam sundar to kindly address the gathering and to give his precious inputs to everyone present here Uh, thank you very much madam for your very generous introduction as rightly pointed out by your honorable uh, pro chancellor professor premra i think uh, your introduction about me might be very very elaborate than my presentation itself uh, anyway thanks a lot for your uh, generous introduction about me um, let's begin uh, this particular uh, uh, chief guest address uh, very good morning ladies and gentlemen at the outset on behalf of national assessment and accreditation council Uh, on behalf of uh, North Cap University, on behalf of Honorable uh, Pro Chancellor Professor Prem Rath, and on my personal behalf, I would like to welcome all the dignitaries, all the participants to this very important uh, virtual conference. And today is a very auspicious day, very important day, and also uh, North Cap University has organized this particular uh, uh, webinar. This would be of great help to very many. participants who are going to participate in this particular uh, uh, webinar definitely they would be very much uh, uh, benefited from this particular webinar and also now north cap university has taken a very good initiative to organize this particular webinar of course under the dynamic leadership of honorable pro chancellor professor prem premrath uh, this uh, particular webinar has been organized now really i compliment uh, dr uh, soranjit arora i think uh, she has taken a good deal of initiative i think uh, many people have helped her maybe i think i can see very many smiling faces in this particular webinar uh, i think it's a good team uh, this team of uh, maybe i think most of you might be good ladies only especially for organizing this particular webinar except the professor prem rath i think most of you might be ladies anyway i can see women power in north cap university definitely you people are organizing this type of uh, Uh, webinar and also see i am uh, really very much surprised and also it is it is a very good uh, venture also because you are doing this particular webinar jointly with the four universities it is a joint venture between one of the indian university that is north cap university and one another is a canadian university and the third one is nigerian university and fourth one is ethiopian university and this joint venture itself is much appreciable and uh, your title is uh, resilience for sustainability revisiting management practices and strategizing for the future now i can see all these key phrases on the face of professor sarnajit arora herself do you know why because she has got a good deal of resilience for sustainability and also because do you know why because even though i was not very much willing to participate in this particular webinar she has used all her management techniques and she contacted some of my close contacts and somehow she was able to uh, convince me and finally i am in as a chief guest for this particular webinar in that way she has got terrific resilience for sustainability that is much appreciable uh, really i compliment uh, her for this and also she was able to bring two shams one from uh, canada sham and maybe he is also an indian maybe might be working for uh, another university i think hope you might be in india only or i don't know whether you might be in canada but anyway one sham from canada one from from uh, one sham from india that is also another appreciable uh, quality of uh, professor sanjit arora uh uh really i compliment all of you and uh, uh, i really uh, grateful to all of you for uh, inviting me over here and uh, this is a great opportunity great platform for me also to express some of our uh, some of my views in this particular uh, webinar uh maybe i think i'll start my address uh, by telling something about higher education scenario in uh, india uh because the world entire because the earlier india was not very much popular uh maybe in the present uh, uh the dimension india is very popular and it, especially in the covid pandemic uh, 19 situation 
uh, entire world is looking at India, maybe because of vaccination, because of our pharmacy companies, because we are doing a terrific job and we are supplying uh, vaccines to the whole world. Because already I think maybe 80, 90 countries might have already got vaccines from India. That's why whole world is looking at India, not only in pharmacy sector, even in other sectors also we are doing very well. And also ours is the second most populous country, maybe next to the China, because we have 1.36 billion population. And I think definitely world cannot ignore India. Maybe because this is the largest consumer economy in the world. Maybe in the management perspective, this is very, very important because uh, the, the world can get good deal of uh, consumers from India. Maybe uh, call iPhones or even Mercedes Benz or BMW or any of the cars. Earlier, those cars are quite unlikely in India. Now go to any of the metropolitan cities, you can see any of these cars uh, very commonly. That's why we have very good uh, um, consumer economy and whole world is looking at us. And also, see, even in the, in the case of uh, higher education arena, uh, definitely world cannot ignore us because we have around 1,000 universities and around 50,000 colleges. And this is the largest number of higher education institutions in the whole world. With respect to size, maybe this is the second largest um, higher education system in the whole world, but with respect to number of higher education institutions, definitely this is the largest. Even with respect to number of accreditations, see, single as a single accreditation agency, NAC was able to do around 13,500 accreditations in a very short span of time. That itself is the highest in the whole world because no single accreditation agency in any part of the world was able to ac uh, do accreditations in a such a short span of time. And also even if you uh, think about our uh, pop student population, uh, maybe if you consider the overall student population in India, it might be more than 328 million. Uh, that is equivalent to overall population of America, United States of America. That means when America is there in the education system in India, even if you consider just higher education system, the students in higher education system might be around 25, 26 million. And that is equivalent to the overall population of Australia. That means we have one Australia and one uh, United States of America in the education system alone. Forget the overall population of India, because maybe if you consider very small countries like Mauritius, Maldives, Singapore or uh, Thailand, definitely we cannot compare that population uh, uh, with our student population. Even if you take Karnataka population, uh, this might be around seven to eight crores, seven and a half to eight crores. This itself is more than American population. In that way, one state is equivalent to maybe uh, one, one foreign country. That's why India cannot be ignored by uh, any country in the in the uh, in the world. And also in, a, in the Indian context, we have lot of diversity and complexity in the whole higher education system. Even if you take the categories of universities, we have several kinds of universities. Just to name, we have affiliating universities, unitary universities, central universities, deemed to be universities, state universities, state private universities, tribal universities, of course, women universities because women power, women universities are there, uh, then uh, medical universities, technical universities, agricultural universities, law universities, Sanskrit universities, like this. We have several categories of universities, that type of diversity you may not find in any part of the world. Maybe I think now Nigerian delegates are there, Ethiopian delegates are there. Even I think definitely they will endorse uh, my views. And even if you take the example of just affiliating university, even under affiliating university, again we have different types of colleges. One is affiliated colleges, constituent colleges, autonomous colleges, government colleges, private colleges, aided colleges. Even in aided colleges also unaided courses are there and also totally unaided colleges are also there. And rural colleges, urban colleges, professional colleges, non-professional, like this, we have different shades of colleges. You cannot find this type of diversity and complexity in the whole world. And also we have another complexity. 
sometimes some of our universities might be smaller than colleges also maybe if you if you go to northeastern uh, states maybe the manipur university or arunachal pradesh university now i think it's called it's a central university now it's the rajiv gandhi university now even that university might be much much smaller than any of these uh, bigger colleges in bangalore or hyderabad or uh, delhi maybe in bangalore we have uh, uh, christ college or jain college or st joseph college that is much much bigger than any of these universities in the uh, northeastern region and this is another complexity another diversity and coming to the population definitely every state is like a different country because we speak different languages uh, different identities we have see maybe because of maybe uh, because i am uh, uh, seeing some opportunities in our challenges also maybe i think britishers might have, might have ruled us but there is one plus point in that because all of us have this english communication skills maybe because of english communication skills now sham sundar is in otherwise sham sundar would have become totally illiterate because if i speak in my mother tongue kannada i don't think uh, any one of you in this particular uh, webinar would have uh, understood me that's why we had to see some positivity in the negative aspects also uh, anyway i think this positivity things also at the end of my talk maybe after another 10 minutes from now i would be throwing some light on that now let us see the emerging trends in the quality assurance in higher education itself now digital transformation is the order of the day and digital this transformation in higher education institutions is very relevant for two reasons now all of you know this covid the uh, 19 pandemic uh, i think has shaken the whole world maybe i think we might have incurred huge losses maybe at the individual level but at the state level at the uh, national level and for the whole world definitely the loss is very very significant under this particular pandemic situation you know even our uh, beloved prime minister asked us to transform all our challenges into opportunities exactly we did i think all of us did the same thing maybe i think most of our higher education institutions uh, had gone for online uh, mode of teaching had we not gone for online mode of teaching definitely all of our stakeholders uh, would have been suffered they would have become victims uh, actually i am not recommending online teaching online teaching is uh, uh, not good in so many dimensions but that is very much inevitable because online learning landscape is uh, improving the present system in the present uh, circumstances see now we have we gone for a face to face interactions definitely i would have come to north cap university i would have seen uh, professor prem rawat face to face i would have got some uh, dry fruits or some cut fruits or some snacks all those things now i am missing all those things that is the negative part of this online education see now i have to go for my own online uh, uh, green tea <laughs> now uh, north cap university i can see only the smiles on the faces of all the delegates but that is also a positive because i consider that is also a positive aspect because seeing a smiling faces that has got a lot of positivity in that way this uh, digital transformation also is very much inevitable under uh, covid 19 pandemic situation and as all of you know now national education policy also has been launched in 2020 under this if you if you do not have digital transformation techniques management techniques or ict techniques that is information communication technology techniques definitely you would be becoming illiterate that's why digital transformation is very very important and it's very much inevitable and revolutionary structural changes in the education system is happening because of the online learning landscape and also this national education policy is totally built on the foundation of pillars of accessibility equity quality and affordability these four pillars are very very important because sometimes accessibility might be there or even equity also might be there but if quality is not there in the higher education system then it's very difficult or sometimes quality might be there affordability also might be there but accessibility may not be there that's why these four pillars are very very important under this national educational policy uh, this is really uh, a boon to all the stakeholders maybe this is a student centric policy 
here lot of accountability or lot of responsibility has been given to not only to the students but also to higher education uh, institutions because in this national education policy 2020 there is a tremendous transformation from rigid uh, complicated and fragmented approach of higher education system to holistic flexible and multidisciplinary approach of higher education system especially in the national education policy they have introduced a concept called abc what is abc because again see the definition of abc also may dif may vary from one type of stakeholders to another type of stakeholders if you ask your kids maybe uh, professor premrath's uh, grandchildren if you ask abc they may tell it is alphabet abc is alphabet but if you ask uh, my assistants in the nac office they will tell abc is a juice <laughs> that is apple beetroot and carrot this is the integrated juice but if you ask the nep specialist they will do different thing they if you do you know what is the abc academic bank for credit bank of credit and this academic bank of credit would be opened for every student in the country that is the plan of national education policy this is just like our sb account the but only difference between this academic bank of credit and the sb account in sb account you can both withdraw and deposit but in academic bank of credit you cannot withdraw you can only deposit your credits for example a particular set of students might be doing their uh, degree program in one particular city maybe say bangalore then after one year if their parents uh, get transferred to delhi then delhi they, if they just, uh, come to north cap university then not cap university they may do some of some other credits because earlier students were not getting anything because they had they were constrained to go for dropouts because now the dropout mechanism would not be there in future as per national education policy maybe after the completion of one year of degree program students would be getting some sort of uh, uh, certificate then if they complete second year they would get some diploma certificate and if they complete all the three years they will get degree certificate and also now we are planning to go for four years degree program also and after the once if the students complete four years degree program they will get a degree certificate with research component in that certificate that is the beauty of this in that way whatever the courses they do irrespective of the inst higher education institutions they can keep on crediting I, th I think they can uh, I, i think they can uh, deposit their credits in academic bank of credit that is the beauty of national education policy anyway national education policy cannot be implemented overnight definitely it takes time definitely we need uh, the support from all the academicians then all the um, chancellors because otherwise only if uh, the educational experts think that uh, an nep can be implemented it is not possible because we need concerted support from all the stakeholders uh, from all the higher education institutions then only implementation would be more meaningful and in future there would be an overarching autonomous umbrella organization that would be uh, established the name of that umbrella organization is eki that is higher education commission of india and this would replace very many regulatory bodies like ugc aict nct so many regulatory bodies would be replaced by this hecki that is higher education commission of india and under this higher education that under the umbrella of uh, this uh, hecki uh, four different independent organizations also would be established maybe one organization exclusively for regulation that would be called nhrc that is national higher education regulatory council and now Uh, our uh, uh, nep experts say that this is uh, uh, light but tight but in my opinion apart from light and tight it should be straight also because in some of the uh, mechanisms it is not straight that's why it should be light uh, tight and straight then only it will be more meaningful then that is the first body then under this umbrella organization second body which is going to come would be for exclusively for accreditation and this is a meta accrediting body that would be called national accreditation council this is not nac national assessment accreditation council this is national act only accreditation council under this meta uh, accrediting body there would be multiple accreditation agencies and uh, this nac would be granting licenses 
to these multiple accreditation agencies. That would be the new development in the Indian higher education system. And the third body would be exclusively for funding. And the last body would be for academic standard setting that would be called GEC, that is General Education Council. And I already told you that a lot of freedom, a lot of responsibility would be given to higher education institutions also. That do you know why? Because hereafter, institutions would be asked to prepare uh, IDPs, that is institutional development plans. Once if you develop this institutional development plans, because you need very good management experts also. Because to, if you want to come for accreditation or if you want to apply for funding agencies, definitely you uh, need to go for various uh, techniques and you have to develop this institutional development plans. Even I was telling different diversities and complexities because I was telling so many nomenclatures of universities, deemed to be university, uh, state university, state private university, uh, then uh, central university, unitary, all these things. Now last, uh, last month, I met one of the foreign students and he was studying in one of the deemed to be universities. Do you know what was the question he asked? Sir, I am studying in such and such a deemed to be university and uh, whatever the degree I am going to get, that also would be deemed to be awarded. Then uh, it was a very difficult question for me and afterwards I was reading this national education policy document. Then I was very much happy. Then afterwards I contacted him again. Then I, I gave him a befitting reply because at that point of time even I didn't have answer. Then afterwards, do you know what was the answer now under NAP? Now there, there's a single nomenclature that is university. That's it. Whether you are deemed to be university, because in the, here also lot of confusions were there. See earlier they were they asked all deemed to be universities to use only their original nomenclature. Then Supreme Court. Then some people went to the Supreme Court and they asked, okay, okay, you can use this deemed to be university only in the parentheses. Then again it has dropped, but it leads to a lot of conf confusion among the stakeholders. That's why to eliminate this type of confusions, now NEP has come out with solution that they can use only one nomenclature that is a university. That is a very good um, outcome. And also this NE under NEP national education policy, now hereafter so many Meru's would, would be established. Meru means uh, it's not taxi. It is a multidisciplinary education and research universities. Again, this Meru concept also may vary from person to person. If you ask any person in the airport, they will call it Meru means it is taxi only. But if you ask me Meru, it is multidisciplinary education and research universities. And this NAP also recognizes the contributions of our ancient universities like Takshashila, Nalanda, Vallabhi and Vikramashila. And these are our ancient universities. And surprisingly, all these ancient universities are multidisciplinary universities. Now we have none of faculty, only IITs, only for engineering, IIMs, only for management. And now that concept would go off hereafter as per national education policy. In that way, uh, we will be having only three categories of higher education institutions. Number one, research intensive universities. Number two, teaching universities. Number three, autonomous colleges. These are the only three categories and the, some of the autonomous colleges also would be made autonomous degree granting colleges because right now even, autonom we, even though we have autonomous colleges in the country, autonomous colleges cannot grant degrees because autonomous colleges also are affiliating colleges, but only thing is they can develop their own curriculum. They may have little bit freedom, but hereafter, as per NAP is concerned, there would be autonomous degree granting colleges. This might be done maybe based on the graded autonomy. And also because of this, even our gross enrollment ratio also can be increased because there would be more number of higher education institutions which can grant degrees because right now our gross enrollment ratio is just 26.3%. And we need to double it maybe in another 10 years. Maybe it should be around 50 percent. Maybe if you go to Canada, I think uh, Professor Sham would be telling me uh, about gross enrollment ratio in Canada. It might be around 80 percent or 85 percent. And uh, when compared to Canadian GER, we are nowhere. And even to reach that one, we may need another 15, 20 years. But in the 10 years, uh, we have a very 
uh, good aspiration uh, maybe according to our aspiration it should be around 50% 10 years uh, down the line maybe in 2030 uh, gross enrollment ratio would be so much at that point of time there would be maybe 2000 universities maybe 1 lakh uh, uh, colleges in that way our higher education system would become more bigger and see now the, I was telling about digital transformation, digital innovative initiatives. Even in MAC, National Suspect Accreditation Council, we have taken very many digi digital innovative initiatives. Earlier, we were asking all the higher education institutions to uh, submit their self study report in the physical mode because NAC is in, located in Bangalore. Uh, this is the headquarters. And for the whole country, this is the headquarters. Even if institutions which are located at uh, uh, Jammu Kashmir or the northeastern region, even they were supposed to come to Bangalore and submit their huge bundle of self study reports. But now we have done away with that particular mechanism. Now, even we have taken very many digital innovative uh, initiatives. As per this, even registration also is online because we have a friendly website and they have to do registration. Even IIQ, it is Institutional Information for Quality Assessment, that is also digitally they have to submit. Self study report also they have to submit uh, uh, online. And fee also they have to do it online. Everything is online. And we have third party validators because right now we want to be totally transparent and we want to be totally open and we want to be totally unbiased. That's why in whatever the self study report, whatever the documentation we get, we don't validate and verify documents submitted by any of the higher education institutions. For that, we have identified third party validators and verifiers. We call that as DVB partner, that is data validation and verification partners. And there are two components in the self study report also, that is quantitative metrics and qualitative metrics. Quantitative metrics, I mean only number, number of computers, number of teachers, number of PhDs, like this. And all these things would be validated with the support of documentary evidences. Sometimes you might be having uh, so many accomplishments. By any chance, if you are not able to uh, give supporting documentary evidences, then for those metrics you may not be in, you will be out, you will be scoring less marks. That's why now documentation also is improving in the country because when we when NAC got established, we were we started uh, focusing on documentation process because in our country, especially documentation is poor, very poor. Even if you go to the highly rated accredited institutions, documentation per se is very, very weak. Maybe I think in Canada, Professor Sham would correct me. There, even if you do small things, even if you participate in small webinar, immediately that would be documented. Maybe I think Professor Sham might have already documented about his participation in the uh, in his intranet or internet. He might have already uploaded in the website of his Canadian university. But in India, it is not so. See, even in my case also. See, after my talk, I also may forget. Maybe after another six months, if you ask me whether I had uh, uh, come as uh, chief guest in North Cap University, I also may not have any documentary evidence. And that is the unfortunate part in Indian uh, context. I think most of the institutions also might be doing, but now they are uh, getting a lot of awareness uh, about the importance of uh, documentation. Otherwise, they will score very less in, uh, uh, in the pro during the process of uh, accreditation. That's why we have taken very many initiatives in especially digital innovative initiatives i mean in the history of nac actually we had not conducted any webinar because see this is my 26th year in nac for the last 25 years i have been working with nac we had not conducted not even a single webinar but during this lockdown period last year 2020 do you know how many we have conducted more than 1000 webinars that, that itself is a record See, that is the potential of NAC. Within a year's time, we were able to conduct more than 1000 webinars. I think even we were not very much familiar with these webinars. Now we are very much comfortable. And that is only, only thing is we may not get, I told you, know, we may not get coffee, tea, snacks, dry foods, uh, the cut foods, all those things. That luxury we are missing. But anyway, our office the people, they are also very much generous, like your uh, madam who, who had introduced me. Uh, in the, so in a generous way, they also supply all the snacks. In that way, we are not very much deprived. 
but nonetheless uh, nag has taken very many initiatives then another thing maybe for the participants benefit i would like to tell one more important thing uh, maybe i think none of the delegates might be from america but still i want to give some uh, information uh, uh, about uh, our degrees in america because especially some of our students might be applying for higher studies in america earlier because as all of you know most of our degree programs in india are for the period of 3 years and if you go to us uh, most of the degree programs or i think all degree programs are for a period of 4 years and when they when our students apply for post graduation in anyway it's called uh, uh, ms there uh, then they had been asked to do one year bridge program or crash program you know you do the one staying one year in us is very very expensive even to do a two years masters degree program for example computer my even my nephew also did uh, uh, what is that uh, masters degree in computer science from southern california university the cost would be somewhere around 40 to 50 lakhs that is the minimum the two if you are very stringy uh, if you are a little bit luxurious that expenditure also will go off how many students can afford that's why so we were able to convince some of the universities in uh, america and now many universities have got convinced now they have lifted this one year uh, crash program uh, period now straight away our people our students from 3 years degree program can apply for post graduation straight away provided if they come from a, a grade and above uh, accredited higher education institution that's the only class our class in that way for our students if they are from a very good higher education institutions this one year would be exempted straight away they can do post graduation in america that is the uh, best part of uh, accreditation because when i joined nac none of these even in bangalore because even though nac is in bangalore none of the colleges none of the universities in bangalore were able to come forward for the process of assessment accreditation now scenario has been totally changed at that point of time even our academicians were not able to pronounce the word acc accreditation because they were telling accreditation accredit then they, they were probably anyway i think i may not be able to pronounce in their style because since for the last uh, for, uh, 25 years i have been pronouncing accreditation in the proper way that's why i mean i may not be able to pronounce in a wrong way Uh, anyway when we were able to uh, correct their pronunciation then we were able to create awareness because we were able to meet very many governors very many chancellors pro chancellors vice chancellors then technocrats bureaucrats for uh, for the last uh, uh, so many years we did that exercise now scenario about accreditation has been totally changed in the country and also now accreditation is a prerequisite for very many things even if you want to apply for autonomy uh, autonomous status accreditation is a prerequisite from autonomous college to deemed to be university it is a prerequisite in this way there are very many uh, uh, important aspects attached to accreditation and anyway, before i wind up maybe i may take another 2 minutes because i took the permission of uh, um, uh, madam madam also maybe i may speak for another 2 3 minutes with the permission of uh, uh, professor premrath sir shall i go ahead for another 2 3 minutes okay yeah uh, yeah because i should not uh, bore uh, all the dignitaries and uh, delegates in this particular uh, uh, webinar because i thought of telling something about best practices because very many people keep on talking about best practices Uh, because especially here even your title title is also revisiting management practices and strategizing for the future maybe in national education policy also the main purpose of this national education policy also it has lot of a good deal of resilience for sustainability and strategies for the future that is the basis and also coming to these uh, uh, best practices because best practices can be in every type of institutions not only uh, in uh, management institutions go to any higher education institutions and also go to any of the countries including uh, canada nigeria or uh, what is that ethiopia who are participating in this today's thing even go to their countries best practices are very much inevitable see best practices can, because there might be again nomenclature differences i was telling about meru or abc and all no in this way again uh, the this nomenclature also may vary from one type of stakeholders to another stakeholders maybe it can be called good practices in some countries best practices in some countries or it can be innovative practices or it can be next practices 
you call whatever the nomenclature uh, you want and i will give a simple definition of best practices best practices are those practices which can contribute significantly for the growth and development of your institution those practices can be called best practices or good practices innovative practices next practices in that way whatever the nomenclature you want to call call and these best practices can be identified maybe when you when you send your uh, faculty members to different uh, webinars or seminars like this definitely uh, different institutions also might be having best practices at that point of time they can learn some best practices they can identify those best practices and you, you can start implementing in your higher education institution also maybe the uh, canadian universities might be having some best practices you should not borrow those best practices straight away and implement in north cap university then you will be a flat please don't implement that because it, that has to be contextualized to indian context if it is not suitable to us then we should not wear see earlier i was wearing suit uh, now it is not uh, possible that's why we, uh, we are, both the shams have gone for modi coat now because again this is a strategy because maybe in the summer it's very difficult see even during intro introduction also professor prem roth was also in a very nice suit he was like a young boy but now he is also not wearing a suit maybe because of summer because maybe uh, northern india might be more hotter when compared to southern india see that is a st st strategy that is also a, one of the practices and also these best practices can be institutionalized and also internalized what is institutionalization making the best practices an integral part of the institution is institutionalization making the best practices an integral part of the individual is internalization when you do these two things then your university would be a successful university see maybe see uh, each one of us might be doing some physical activities maybe yoga meditation or gym or maybe zumba dance or uh, your acrobatics uh, uh, then uh, aerobatics so so many exercises i think we might be doing again it may vary from person to person that uh, maybe i think priti madam i think what is priyanka yeah Uh, she might be doing maybe zumba dance or um, our uh, uh, arora madam might be doing yoga or sir also might be doing yoga or uh, swimming or sham also might be doing swimming maybe i think he might be having good swimming pool maybe in canada uh, then irrespective of those things but only thing again sustain resilience for sustainability again sustainability should be there we should be regular we should be punctual and that itself is a best practice that will be helpful not only at the individual level when you are good definitely you can contribute very significantly to your respective uh, higher education institution also in that way institution also you will be more relevant and individually also you would be more relevant you would be of great help not only for the higher education institutions even for your family community society you would be uh, more uh, relevant and everywhere in all the sectors revisiting or redefining these practices are happening go to any field see now if we take automobile industries we are, we are redefining see whatever the facilities i was seeing maybe 20 years ago in mercedes benz or bmw or audi uh, no those are there in even suzuki cars the ordinary cars uh, especially the mirror adjustment and all those things are they have become very common in ordinary cars I, i call that itself is a best practice because they are redefining these things in the automobile industry maybe you know battery operated cars are going to come now in a big way now already i think some of the companies they have already launched but they are going maybe another 3 4 years down the line battery operated cars are going to come that would be the order in the even indian context also why they are redefining their objectives they are redefining the quality aspects and even if you go to the medical field again they are redefining only in the higher education system our redefining time is very slow it is not very much encouraging see maybe because of this covid 19 we also have redefined in the higher education system do you know what we did because even the mode of teaching we have redefined that's why we have gone for online mode of teaching that itself is a redefinition of teaching because earlier it was quite unlikely Yeah, I think had we proposed this one to any of the academicians, I think none of the academicians would have um, purchased this particular idea. But now it is very much inevitable whether we like it or not. This is the only mode now. 
maybe once uh, this uh, if corona comes down then again face to face uh, would be uh, coming but once if you realize this benefits see last time i was supposed to participate in egypt uh, I, I i i had been identified as a guest of honor there uh, then now uh, they also had uh, understood the benefits of this online see they need not spend on anything they need not give me air ticket business ticket they need not give they need not give anything for my accommodation five star accommodation they need not give again that luxury of giving fruits vegetables uh, or food the snacks nothing can be given and in no honorarium also everything is free in that way they are also becoming intelligent and we are getting acclimatized to this type of webinar mode and this is very easy economical cost effective time effective definitely once if you get adjusted to this mode of uh, um, uh, webinars definitely in future also we may uh, reduce the quantum of face to face interaction see had you invited uh, the another professor uh, from canada the professor sham definitely you would have spent several lakhs now it is easy or nigeria or uh, ethiopia now you need not spend anything at all only his internet cost it might be 10 rupees that's it in that way it is very very cost effective that's why uh, in future again we are redefining the even the webinars also i would like to give another example also for the best practice last time i was reading in the newspaper in the bangalore especially in the medical field uh, one patient approached uh, the manipal hospital and uh, the, she was supposed to undergo knee replacement surgery and she said no 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 i don't want to undergo this surgery then group of doctors uh, approached her then finally they were able to identify that she had got some claustrophobia uh, do you know what is claustrophobia claustrophobia is the fear for closeness and once if she undergoes uh, this knee replacement surgery she should be in icu in icu you know it's a very sterile place very closed place nothing will be there all that ventilator so many very scary room so icu is a scary room and in that case no ventilator no windows no doors very, very everything is closed and only selected people would be coming that's why she didn't want didn't want to undergo uh, knee replacement surgery do you know what they did our doctors especially doctors from bangalore they had redefined the icu itself in icu a big airy room fitted with large windows looking out on a garden with a fountain they had created that type of icu in bangalore in manipal uh, in uh, malayapal hospital and uh, the, they were able to convince that the patient uh, who has got claustrophobia then they were very successful in this way when every in all the sectors redefining concepts are happening in a, why not in higher education that's why in higher education also we should be more vibrant now also we started because of covid 19 uh, we started uh, uh, learning redefining of concepts in higher education also but this should be more faster see even definition of positivity negativity also got changed because normally we say you should be positive you should have negative attitude at all but the moment you say positive i am also scared because now i want to be corona negative i don't want to be positive now that's why now your positive negative definition also got changed that's why if you say somebody you are negative you are uh, corona positive immediately i think another 10 15 people will run away they may not come to my cabin at all then also nac also would ask me not to come for 15 days at least i should be quarantined uh, voluntarily mandatorily or mandatorily voluntarily or voluntarily mandatorily i should get quarantined in my home that's why i should not be positive in the corona pandemic situation thereafter i should have positive attitude thereafter because now the using the word positivity or positive itself is a very uh, scary thing that's why in this way uh, uh, you can use and also i think each one of you might be asking what is this best practice nac is also recommending higher education institute also even a professor uh, prem roth also ask us to do best practices uh, because uh, he got directions from nac uh, then uh, each one of you might be wondering in what way i can contribute but in my opinion each one of you can contribute do you know why do you know and how i think i would give another small example see i am i i have taken another proactive measure even in nac do you know what is that use of renewable energy that is using solar uh, panels 
see nac also earlier see now whatever the light we have now it is totally 100% now totally we are depending on solar energy we are not using our bescom uh, our electrical company energy at all now we have gone for 220 kilowatts we have around 687 panels on the top of nac now in that way every university every college you have very good rooftop you got very good solar power maybe especially in southern india we get better uh, solar power uh, maybe when compared because you may have more chilled uh, um, atmosphere also maybe in the northern india uh, at least maybe for 50% of the year that would be of great help in that way what we do is we motivate our people because in every university definitely there will be very many stakeholders like students teachers non teaching staff and if you motivate these people at least everybody may not be able to afford these things see for 1 kilowatt it might be 50000 60000 rupees they depending upon their affordability they can go for 2 kilowatts 3 kilowatts 5 kilowatts because for domestic maximum of 10 kilowatts would be given and if at least 10% of your stakeholders if you motivate in turn they also can motivate so many other people and wherever i go i normally i give this example in that way i also have already motivated very many people and in that way there is no power crisis in the country after another 5 years or so then our country also can become like america or canada see there is a black day in by chance if there is a power cut or shut down they will call it's a black day in america india every day is a black day most of the time it power power will go off that's why this black day concept can be removed and if you are um, power because again sustain resil you are telling your topic is resilience for sustainability that's why we should be self sufficient even in power and that is also one of the best practices in that way each one of you can contribute and also i was telling about national education policy and for the implementation also capacity building of academic leaders is the first step for digital transformation because if you don't go for capacity building of all our vice chancellors pro vice chancellors chancellors uh, principals directors uh, or deans or any of the policy makers if you don't go for capacity building of these people then nep will not be very much meaningful that's why once if you create awareness among these policy makers among these leaders uh, then nep implementation will be more effective and it will be more easier and in a short span of time nep uh, can be a reality and also see earlier india was considered as a vishwaguru now under nep again we want to regain that vishwaguru um, status that's why nep may facilitate india to restore its role as a vishwaguru by promoting india as a global study destination provide providing premium education at affordable cost in way this is called internationalization again we can regain uh, vishwaguru status and for building self reliant india overall of uh, Uh, indian higher education system is uh, very much inevitable in this way i think we can go ahead now there are very many delegates in this particular uh, uh, webinar definitely uh, this webinar would be of great help they can learn very many good practices also management techniques also in this particular webinar and they can start implementing these things in their respective higher education institutions irrespective of the country and in that way i wish all the participants all the success all the good luck uh, in this particular uh, webinar because they are representing different higher education institutions and um, on behalf of national assessment accreditation council on behalf of north cap university on behalf of professor uh, uh, prem roth and also on my personal behalf i wish all the higher education uh, institutions from different parts of the country who are participating in this particular uh, webinar all the very best to reach the pinnacle on the plateau of uh, higher education thank you very much thanks for your attention i think i might have taken a little bit more time sorry if you kindly excuse me i mean of course i had taken a little bit uh, freedom and also uh, i had taken uh, earlier uh, i think pre consent from uh, both the professor prem rath and also arun madam thank, thank you very much thank you so much thank thank you so much sir we are honored for your enlightened words Colonel B Venkat Colonel Venkat is a serving army officer from the technical branch corps of electronics and mechanical engineering having done his mechanical engineering from army institutes having 30 years of service experience and served in all possible appointments of command staff and instructional 
The officer is presently on deputation with AICTE and is handling faculty development related issues and release of grants through AICTE AQIS schemes. The officer has a unique distinction of representing India as its technical military attache to Russia. The officer also handles AICTE's various quality initiatives like NITTT National Initiative for Technical Teachers Training, which is mandatory for the purposes of regularization and promotion to all teachers, examination reforms, implementation, 360 degree feedback of faculty members towards overall improvement of teaching and learning and implementation processes of NEP 2020. May I please request Colonel B. Venkat to kindly address us. Very good afternoon, ma'am, and thanks a lot for giving me an honor to be coming on your platform and be speaking. Uh, let me first congratulate straight away uh, the North Cap University for having done a wonderful job in getting a lot of people together on a very apt and relevant subject and the parameters of what is being spoken today by each one. It is so very relevant when we get together in a forum wherein one of the best and the topmost people at their peak of their academic brilliance and at their administrative brilliance are coming together and be speaking on, on a subject which is chosen as resilience for sustainability and quite obviously you are focusing on the management subject and aligned to the future needs. I, I had also the pleasure of listening to the previous participants. My due regards to Professor Premrat sir uh, outstanding gentlemen, outstanding academicians. So that was great to hear, sir. And quite obviously, when I heard Dr. Sham Sundar, sir, it was wonderful to listen to Sham Sundar, sir, and actually get to hear from him as to how the NAC has been carrying out activities towards promoting education, towards ensuring that there is a commonality and some standard set parameters have been laid out for the overall country towards higher education. It was wonderful to hear Sir speaking on uh, national education policy, its outcomes and uh, what are the main highlights of the national education policy. Having said uh, all this, it is extremely pertinent to complement North Cap University, the complete staff and the management, uh, especially Dr. Swanjit Arora, ma'am. Uh, you being at the chair presently getting it done, the various conference organizers who are there, your completely advisory board who has been involved in getting this particular activity finalized. We do appreciate and we do understand, you know, a conference of this nature wherein it's focused on an international level talk. You're getting speakers. I, I went through your proposals. You are having a sessions going on subsequently, five of them in a, in a parallel activity which would be done at a later time frame post lunch. Uh, it is very good to see the involvement and if I may copy from Sham Sundar sir, the best practices that are prevalent in many other universities platforms and then sharing it for a common larger cause wherein the audience will get to be listening to the best practice. The participants will understand the issues which are there and commensurating there will be an opportunity for everybody to put it in use and then move it forward as you keep seeing it, fructifying it in your uh, system. Wonderful, there seems to be a marketing session, there seems to be banking, then there seems to be a service and insurance. Second track also you have, one is on HRM, that is a human resource and then the general management. Quite understandably towards uh, management, you're focusing on the complete subject and when I use the word, uh, you have used, chosen to use the word resilience for sustainability. It is a very wholesome definition. It's coming in one, three words and you're giving a large meaning to this particular thing. And if I may just about tell the topic itself and I with, with your permission be using these words with due regards to the North Cap University. This is one of the best three words I have heard. I would be using it and copying it subsequently in many more forums because the understanding of this is what have we gone through in the last one year 
is not something which was so very natural it is a once in a lifetime disaster or a pandemic which anybody has gone through so resilience means overcoming the adversities and then still shining forward sustainability implies taking it forward and maintaining the virtual ethos or sustaining or maintaining the standards in such a manner that over a long period of time you can draw it so that is how when you connect these two things i also need to be appreciating to tell you that your topic is uh, a very very apt topic congratulations congratulations and we also need to be congratulating as i do understand and i do see that uh, you have gone in in such a manner that you people are uh, collaborating with the foreign universities towards the subject that is how internationalism also comes into the play uh, we also need to understand lots of things which are being moving around us if this kind of conference cannot be seen as to moving in isolation neither these kind of activities can be done in such a manner that they are not connected to each other so to that effect i compliment the complete management towards getting the best people on board to make sure that your particular activity is reasonably well connected to each and every stakeholder who is there wonderful to see a uh, academician of the caliber of uh, prem bharat sir joining in wonderful to see nac associated aict associated you have from university of the fraser valley canada i see that you have a representation who is coming all the way from nigeria we have a representation at a subsequent when you have the bretabo university represent, uh, representation also coming and speaking and when you do all these things you also have very diverse things when i am seeing it that you are also involving the railways and when we see the chairman and the founder canvin member advisory on indian railways also coming as part of your valedictory it it speaks for your uh, larger understanding and to the participants i can assure you one thing this this is going to be a wonderful activity which is being proposed over next four hours something is going to continue till four make sure because uh, we appreciate we understand the efforts that is going into ensuring an activities of this nature these are not you know just planned overnight and done this requires huge planning and activities which go beyond and behind which goes beyond and behind and then when these kind of things happen the best thing that a participants or the people at least two people have been called the minimum that we can do is that complement each and everybody into the successful start of an activity any activity which starts successfully always uh, brings in very very good results my best wishes and compliments Uh, i can only assure you one thing uh, ma'am and i can assure you only one thing on behalf of aict uh, we are aligned to the complete overall focus of national education policy as brought out by sham shundar sir we can also say very proudly at aict we have taken a lot of steps in alignment to the nep we are moving towards nep in such a manner that even though the nep vision document says very clearly that by 2035 india should become the educational hub and we should be revisiting and going back to our pristine old glory of nalanda and takshashila why 2035 we people collective together if moved in the same direction you me each and every other stakeholder we should be in a position to take it by 2030 why 2035 that's the catch word nowadays and when we have these kind of activities the way we are happening today and we people are coming together on a virtual platform and talking my sincerest regards and deepest best wishes to north cap uh, university to ensure that you people have come on board for collective moving forward with a vision and aim which is a common for each one of us and with these small steps be rest assured the aim which has been set out and the collective effort which each one of us is moving towards will surely be achieved my best wishes once again Uh, Swaranjit Arora, ma'am, please keep doing the good job. It's fabulous to see coming on your platform and being part of this conference. Great, great work by your organizers. Great work by your management. Uh, all the best. Please do let us know anything uh, that AICT can ever be contributing. 
or that we can be doing anything towards the overall improvement of quality in the technical education. Thank you and thanks a lot and thanks for giving me an opportunity to come and speak. Thank you, much. Thank you so much, sir, for your words uh, of encourage, encouraging words and your insightful uh, words. It was really inspirational. Dr. Shyam Vyas. Dr. Shyam Vyas did his initial schooling from Mayo College, Ajmer, and his initial graduation from the prestigious Birla Institute of Technology and Science, Bilani. He went on to earn his BBA and MBA from Western Illinois University in the USA. His PhD is from JNU. He has taught at AACBCSB accredited university, WIU and UWL in the USA for many years with distinction. He was repeatedly nominated for Teacher of the Year Award at the University of Wisconsin, La Crosse, USA, and was faculty advisor to American Marketing Association Collegiate Chapter at both American universities and was one of the most active consultants to local industry through university's Small Business Development Center. Additionally, he has been a visiting faculty on semester long assignments to Zongshan, Sun Yat-sen University, China, Simon Fraser University, Canada, and at the University of the Fraser Valley, previously UCFE, Abbotsford, Canada. He continued to be associated as a visiting faculty with Fraser Valley, India since 2007 and is now serving as a principal as well as a full time professor of marketing and business. In India, he has taught as visiting faculty in the areas of marketing at reputed management program such as Faculty of Management Studies FMS MBA program. Sri Ram College of Commerce postgraduate Global Business Operations Program at the Times Groups, Times School of Marketing, Infinity Business School, and at Birla Institute of Management Technologies MBA program. He has been PhD guide to research scholars enrolled in PhD programs in marketing at Birla Institute of Technology, Mesra, and at North Cap University, Gurugram. He is a member of the PhD thesis evaluation panel at North Cap University. Professor Shyam Vyas was coordinating head of MBA department at Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan, New Delhi since 1996 till 2006 and their professor of marketing until August 2008 when he decided to leave the Bhavan to pursue his writings, research and consultancies. He has been founding director of Ashlar Business School, Delhi Agra Highway, founding executive dean of Ansel Institute of Management Technology and founding director of Shyam Vyas MARC School of Business and has also been program director and lead faculty at GMARC Executive Excellence Program at Gargi College, Delhi University, New Delhi. He is also the president and managing director of his marketing consulting firm Shyam Vyas Mark Private Limited and is actively involved in the domestic and international marketing effort and in assisting businesses deal effectively with emerging marketing issues and opportunities. Dr. Shyam Vyas has been associated with many types of organizations and their marketing effort as a consultant to assist them. These include Modi Revlon, Modi Lufthansa, MMTC Tata Rallies, Nafit, NDDB, Textplus Group, Classic, Crystal Sun Ventures, Cargill India, FAI, SBEC Sugar, Wind Medicare, Senator, Delhi Tourism, Omega, etc. to name a few and has organized more than 100 seminars on marketing topics in India and abroad. Additionally, he serves as an independent director on board of directors for a few large reputable public limited companies advising them on marketing and business matters. Author of three major textbooks in marketing, consumer behavior and market research areas, Dr. Vyas has published a total of 13 textbooks and has been published in international journals like Journal of International Business Studies, JIBS, Asia Productivity Journal, APJ, and Journal of Personal Selling and Sales Management, JPSSM. 
He has published, presented many international and domestic conference research papers, including the prestigious annual Global Research Symposium on Marketing and Entrepreneurship. He has been a keynote speaker at several international and national conferences, including the 39th World Marketing Conference. What he likes most, cherishes and enjoys most is interaction with his students. May I please request Dr. Shyam Vyas to kindly address the gathering. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, sir. okay. Thank you, thank you. That was a wonderfully kind of you to give me so much grace and credit. I do not know whether I deserve it, but I am overwhelmed by the eminence that I find myself in today. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, respected Pro Chancellor, Dr. Premvrat, Dr. M.S. Shamsunda, Colonel Venkat, Professor Emma, and President Gansha from Ethiopia and Nigeria, and wonderful colleagues, and of course, the dynamic chair of this organizing committee at North Cap, Dr. Swaranjit Arora. You've been very kind in, in coordinating and motivating me to be here and thank you very much. I find this to be a wonderful opportunity when I can share some of my thoughts fairly briefly and I promise you I will be brief, hopefully bright and be gone. It is on my personal behalf and on behalf of the University of the Fraser Valley Canada that I convey our appreciation and best wishes for a grand success of this wonderful international conference. This is truly an international conference in all its dimensions, with four wonderful universities coming together, many thought leaders and researchers uh, presenting a plethora of uh, what is more than 40 research papers, uh, 100 plus delegates, and uh, I am sure that this gathering will yield a wonderful harvest of thought-provoking ideas and conclusions and, and truly go a long way to fulfill uh, the promise that this theme tends to show, which is resilience for a sustainability and revisiting management practices and strategizing for the future. Ladies and gentlemen, and great researchers and colleagues, you know, one must be resilient. We must bounce back because time waits for none and time does not stay static. The very idea that we are in business, that we operate in the real world, despite being at the universities, our products, our students go out into the real world, work in industries, to fulfill their personal aspirations and societal aspirations. So there would have to be a continuing relationship. And while economies and economic performances may go up and may come down, and sometimes because of factors that are uncontrollable, factors that come from behind, surprise us like the COVID situation that has come through, in the last 14 odd months, oh, we must be bouncing back. And so we must be resilient. And I hope that yes, we would want to be sustainable. And the sustainability goes a long way. I think Professor Sham Sundar said many things that make great sense to a lot of us that we need to make sure that we make use of those opportunities. And to my mind, what comes is that when opportunity, when opportunity and preparation, they come together. When we are well prepared and we find opportunities, success results. 
I believe that this conference will go a long way into providing us with those thoughts that will pave the way for strategizing and looking into the future in a way that we can really sharpen our practices of management. We realize very well that management practices are done within the ambit of business and organizations. And to my mind, very simply put, and I will not be very academic about it, but I believe that yes, sustainability, resilience, the way we conduct ourselves will all go towards pointing the way towards good ethics. To my view, organizations and businesses have the power to do good. In fact, I tell my students as to what they understand of business, and I tell them that the orientation that we must have and you must have as aspiring students that will go out in the real world is that you will do good, good to society. So we will provide safe products. We will provide sustainable products. We will arrive at sustainable strategies and we will not be down and out, but we will be resilient. So I believe that the theme of this conference is wonderful. And I believe that this world is fast becoming, if it is not already become, a global mall. So it is great to see uh, organizations and universities and researchers from Ethiopia to Nigeria, to Canada, to India, all coming together and, and being the recipient of such a wealth of knowledge from eminences like Pro Chancellor Pembrath, Professor Shamsundar, Colonel Venkat, and I'm sure uh, Professor Emma Okoya and President Gunjo will share wonderful thoughts which will provide great directions to us. And please understand that yes, as, as was stated, you know, India is, is uh, a country that everybody is looking around at. You know, we want to regain that Vishwaguru status. And I think there is so much effort being put in by such wonderful people to ensure that uh, we arrive there. Yes, truly said, we have one of the largest network as Professor Sham Sundar said, you know, 60,000 plus colleges. Uh, we have one of the largest network of higher education and it is onerous and it is our responsibility to ensure that this wonderful infrastructure is bettered, fine-tuned and the thought leaders of tomorrow uh, begin to get into the practice and the habit of uh, doing great research. Because as Aristotle said, you know, knowledge is the only, only, only instrument of production. And knowledge is the only instrument of production which does not and is not subject to what is diminishing returns. Education and this education, please understand my view is that all men naturally desire knowledge. And through this wonderful research papers that many of the delegates are sharing with us and which will probably be instrumental in shaping many of the thoughts and thinking that will come through. You know, I am sure that we will produce as the end of this wonderful conclave a, a lot of thinking that will go to help the cause of the theme of this particular conference. India is certainly the 800 pound gorilla on the block because we harbor a substantial proportion of humanity. So it becomes a responsibility, you know, uh, these 300 million people, students, 60,000 plus colleges, uh, the wonderful uh, treasure that we have need to be put to great use. And I think we are doing that in terms of organizing such conferences. Uh, we are wonderful adapters. Uh, once again, I quote my namesake, uh, the eminent uh, Professor Sham Sundar, when he says that, you know, uh, last so many years did not do much of those webinars. And now lately we have adapted this COVID situations and we are into these webinars, we are into these conferences, 
And I think, I think the times will teach us to really go forward very fast, very transparently, and very ethically. So I wish this conference great success, and I'm sure that many things will come through, which will be great. In America, one of the things that I learned was that if you want to be a good professor, you must continuously upgrade ourselves. I believe that we as teachers, as researchers, are always on a hunt, always on a lookout for more knowledge. And this knowledge is very important to be upgraded. And, and the more that one learns, the more he realizes, the more she realizes that we know so little. So I think it is very important that we do research and these research papers will throw wonderful light on the things. I, I almost think that this time as uh, it came about, uh, my interactions with Professor Premvrat uh, resulted in the University of the Fraser Valley coming um, to this conference as collaborators. Uh, we intend to make use of such opportunities with the good permission of Professor Premvrat and Dr. Soranjit in future with dull bulb. This time we had a little bit of a shorter notice, but uh, I can promise the organizers that the next time they will come, uh, I'm sure many researchers at the University of the Fraser Valley would be very enthusiastic and would be well prepared to participate in a more intense and a more exhaustive manner. Uh, I leave you with the thought that as we go forward in time, we are always interested in aspirational, aspirationally the best practices. I think this matter was touched upon by my previous eminent speakers. And I believe that all of us want to make them a part of these best practices, a part of the organizational culture. I'm sure that in the universities that we come from, at the higher educational institutions that we are associated with, I'm sure that research will become and is becoming fast a part of the organizational culture. And, and therefore, I, I, I have great confidence that India is well on its way uh, towards becoming and fulfilling the promises that it probably is aspiring for. And to that end, I believe that, yes, we will become more relevant, we will strategize, and we will take a peep into the future to make sure that this vast population becomes properly directed into the thinking that thought leaders from this country can provide direction in. Uh, in America, there is this adage, you publish or you perish. And that goes to the idea that yes, we require to continuously upgrade ourselves. I think once again, this conference will go to make sure that that happens. There are two factors that I talk about sometimes, and that is productivity and accountability. The third factor that comes in is ethics. So as the organizations move forward, as the academicians move forward, I believe that we will inculcate, you know, those best practices to ensure more productivity, to ensure higher levels of accountability. And we are doing this at the same time, our conduct would be very ethical because society to come will probably tolerate what is only unselfish, productive and well done things which will go a long way to fulfilling societal aspirations. And society will become very intolerant of what is selfish businesses. So the best practices that require to be revisited, these management practices that we require to revisit will hopefully enable course corrections wherever there appears to be some deficiency. And I'm sure 
the, the variety of papers that will be presented, uh, whether they're in marketing, whether they're in HR, whether they're in finance, will go a long way towards that particular aspiration. With that, I thank the organizers and I thank everybody that uh, enabled my presence at this conference. Thank you, uh, Dr. Solanjit. Uh, thank you, Professor Premvrat, uh, Dr. Ms. Shamasundar, Colonel Venkat, and the two wonderful people that have come from Nigeria, Ethiopia, and all the colleagues that have listened to me. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much, sir. Your words were really inspiring and insightful. I would like to extend my sincere thanks to Dr. M. S. Shyam Sundar for giving his precious time to all of us and enlightening us. <clears throat> Professor Emma Okoy. He is a distinguished educationalist. His dynamic experience and ability to lead has made Namdi Azikwe University, one of the leading universities in Nigeria. Professor Emma Okoe is the Professor of Accountancy and Council Member in Namdi Azikwe University, Awaka, Anambra State, Nigeria. His area of specialization is public sector accounting, forensic accounting and auditing. He is an active member of many professional bodies. They are Nigerian Institute of Management, Association of National Accountants of Nigeria, Chartered Institute, Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, Institute of Strategic Management, Institute of Industrial Administration of Nigeria, Strategic Institute for Natural Resources and Human Development, Institute of Fraud Examiner, African Business School, Certified Institute of Public Administrators, England and Wales, Association of National Accountants of Nigeria, National Accounting Association, International Institute of Certified Forensic Investigation, IICFIP USA. He has obtained numerous professional qualifications in Associate Member Nigerian Institute of Management, Certified National Accountant, Associate of Chartered Institute of Taxation, Fellow Institute of Strategic Management, Fellow of Industrial Administration, Fellow Strategic Institute for Natural Resources and Human Development, Member Certified Fraud Examiner, Member African Business School, Fellow Certified Public Administrators of England and Wales, Fellow Certified National Accountant, Fellow National Accounting Association, Certified Forensic Investigation Professional USA. He has been editor of various prestigious journals. Some of them are Journal of Management Sciences, Journal of Global Accountancy, the University Advanced Research Journal, Journal of Banking and Finance, Federal Polytechnic, OCO, Consulting Editor, Journal of Business and General Education, Consulting Editor, International Journal of Academic Researchers, a publication of International Association for Promoting Professional Excellence in Research and Education, Consulting Editor, Journal of International Accounting, Department of Accounting, Federal Polytechnic, OCO, European Journal of Management, International Journal of Library, Management and Social Sciences, Consulting Editor, Multidisciplinary International Journal, Sharda University, India and Federal Polytechnic, OCO. He has vast experience and has always been a strong pillar as academician as well as administrator. May I request Professor Emma to kindly address the gathering. by Professor Ema Ayokwe at the inaugural session of Virtual International Conference on Resilience for Sustainability, the Visiting Management Practices and Strategies for Future. I wish to warmly welcome all the participants to this uh, great gathering of intellectuals from around the globe to this by Professor Ema Ayokwe at the inaugural session of Virtual International Conference on Resilience for Sustainability, the Visiting Management Practices and Strategizing for Future. I wish to warmly welcome all the participants to this uh, great gathering of intellectuals 
from around the globe to the International Conference on Resilience for Sustainability, Revisiting Management Practices and Strategizing for the Future. Allow me to warmly thank uh, the organizers. I think uh, there is some network issue uh, from their end. Uh, probably they are uh, talking from uh, Nigeria. That's why. So Dr. Priyanka, can we uh, show their uh, address that recorded address that they have shared? Yes, ma'am. Sure. Uh, uh, I believe there is a uh, technical issue. I would request Dr. Uh, N. Bonu to kindly uh, say a few words because there is some technical error over here. We are not able to uh, play the video which has been shared by Professor Emma Okoye. Hello? Hello? Yes, Mr. Bonner. Yes. Yeah, are you hearing me? Yes, yes. Okay. Namaste once again. I'm actually sorry for the technical hitches uh, from the presentation of uh, Professor Koye. Uh, I bet he sent his PowerPoint slide also, which I sent. I thought it would have been shared. Uh, but um, I have the PowerPoint here with me. I don't know if you can allow me to uh, read it on his behalf. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so this is uh, from Professor Imokoye, Professor of Accountancy, uh, in, in an address presented at the inaugural session of the Virtual International Conference on Resilience for Sustainability. Revisiting management practices and strategizing for the future today, 26th of March, uh, being organized by NotCap University. I uh, wish to warmly welcome all the participants to this uh, great gathering of intellectuals from around the globe to the International Conference on Residence for Sustainability. Revisiting management practices and strategizing for the future. Allow me to warmly thank the organizers of this important conference for giving me the privilege of addressing you all. For me, it is an honor and a pleasure. The organizers have a great work in partnering with tertiary institutions from Canada, Nigeria, and Ethiopia in organizing this conference to discuss on the need for resilience 
for sustainability for organizations, especially in the post-COVID-19 era. The lessons learned from the devastating effect of COVID-19 on businesses around the world have portrayed the need for businesses to revisit the management practices to build the required resilience for sustainability. At the beginning of the year 2020, the global economy confronted several turbulence, including geopolitical uncertainties in the Middle East, the continued trade war between the major superpowers, worsening business and consumer confidence, slowing industrial production. The arrival of the pandemic has literally grounded the global economic will to a halt. The existing business models were caught napping as they could not withstand the shock because of the pandemic. The no new normal is gradually shaping the alternative business model in virtually every sphere of global economic activity. The lockdown has impacted both the emerging and existing businesses, large and small. The travel industry has been hugely impacted with airlines cutting flights and tourists canceling business trips and holidays. The global economy is expected to account for economic losses via three transmission channels, supply chains, demand, and the financial market. These channels will impact negatively on businesses household consumption and international trade. In fact, 94% of the Fortune 1000 across the globe and businesses in Nigeria have been impacted and are already witnessing COVID-19 disruptions. Following the spread of COVID-19 across countries, global growth has been reviewed uh, downwards with sub-Saharan Africans having the highest downward revision from 2.9% to 2% because of its vulnerability to external shocks. A Reuters poll predicted that China's annual growth rate will slow down to 5.5% from 6.1% in 2019. The slowdown is mainly attributable to a, a halt in economic activities in China and other major cities around the world. Businesses are dealing with lost revenues and disrupted supply chain due to China factory shutdown. Tens of millions of people remaining in lockdown in dozens of cities and other countries extending travel restrictions. The global supply chain will be negatively impacted due to the regulatory responses to the outbreak and the spillover effect of the supply shock. Global demand will be curtailed as the economic impact of the global standstill trickles to businesses and household consumption. The rapid spread of the virus have, has triggered a sell off in risky assets globally as quite several blue chip companies have warned that disruptions could offset sales and profit forecasts. Investors and business confidence have greatly been dented and disruptions to supply chains and weaker external demand is seen to moderate growth. The economic disruptions caused by the virus and increased uncertainty are being reflected in lower valuations an increased volatility in the financial market. Notably, the brutal drawdown in the global financial market may ensure a close path to recession for the world economy. One way to cause change or innovation in a system is to disrupt the equilibrium. The COVID-19 pandemic had disrupted the equilibrium in the existing business model, which has brought new normal change. In the post-COVID-19 era, there is need for alternative business model that will have the resilience to absorb the socioeconomic impact of the pandemic and uncertainties in emerging existing businesses, making them sustainable. Moreover, there is need for business models that will be able to withstand future disequilibrium in the system because of any uncertainties. The disruption in the equilibrium caused by the COVID-19 pandemic 
has opened opportunities and challenges for businesses which alternative business models we hopefully handle with required resilience for sustainability. Innovations and resilience that we have witnessed during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. A pandemic or crisis often triggers effort to find innovation solu innovative solutions to the problem at hand. Three aspects of innovation that we have already seen in response to the COVID-19 pandemic are in respect of public-private partnership, more government and non-profit entities fund and encourage research, for example, in the Coalition for Pandemic Preparedness, by the Biometrica Advanced Research and Development Authority, BADA, collaboration with Justin and Sanofi, American Mix, John Hopkins University Research funded by a partnership between Bloomberg Philanthropies and State of Maryland. Uh, then also, it's witness uh, resilience in, uh, and innovation in reconfiguration of private entities. Private things with re relevant expertise reconfigure their innovative and productive effort to tackle current needs. For example, car manufacturers innovate to build ventilators, beauty and cosmetic. Uh, things switch their production to sanitizers. Uh, pharmaceutical companies start clinical trials and move access from their other antiviral drugs. Then also we have clothing companies repurpose uh, factory to produce uh, the, the PPEs. And also is witness in free and open sharing. We see academic journals have opened their paywall for COVID-19 research. The Medtronic has made their product design public. 3D printing schemes are widely shared. A pandemic or crisis often shifts demand and supply uh, patterns in other sectors, which in turn prompts more innovation. It's 7% of marketers in North America predict an increase in consumer use of online services during the pandemic, which we are witnessing, not just in North America, but all over the world. 70% of UK man marketers predict an increase in e-commerce usage. Uh, telehealth capabilities are rapidly expanding and expected to outlast the global pandemic. We now have the telemedicine. Zoom and WebEx have experienced a record of downloads, like we are using now Microsoft uh, PowerPoint, then uh, uh, a Microsoft team. Uh, universities have moved to online education, which was portrayed by the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the presentation from the, the NAC post there. Uh, then Broadway HD is offering a one week free trials in the face of closed Broadway uh, theaters and London West End is streaming free online videos. Repurposing hotel rooms for COVID-19 patients, a crisis often creates economic shocks that may lead to long-term innovations. After immediate emergency is over, individuals who have lost their jobs may be more likely to found startups rather than join an established firm, thereby giving a new uh, 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 supply of uh, entrepreneurial uh, for, uh, agents that will change the system. Uh, in conclusion, it's likely that more turbulences and uncertainties are likely to cause disabling in the world in form of environmental issues, health, and some other uncertainties. So the theme of the conference is quite up, and there need to build strategies uh, that will ensure resilience and sustainability. Uh, there is need for business organizations to build the necessary strategies that will guarantee resilience for sustainability. Strategy being defined as a means by which an individual or an organization accomplishes its objective. The conference with its tracks and sessions tackles the important strategy for businesses to build resilience for sustainability. 
I'm sure that each one of you will identify subjects of his or her interest and will benefit from many fruitful and enriching discussion. I'm particularly happy to be present in this unique event today and to exchange views and share experiences with other high-level professors, colleagues, and friends representing many well-known universities and institutions around the world. I congratulate you for your commitment and active participation. I wish you all the success. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank, thank you, so much, sir, for and hey, Thank you. Please, uh, I apologize for whatever the hitch is. Thank no you. Problem, thank no you. It's, it has been a wonderful interaction. Uh, uh, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Enigagrin Gosha, President, Deborah Tabor University. He is an eminent professor and has benefited the education sector with his innovation ideologies. Dr. Gosho started teaching in a primary school at a young age as a diploma graduate. Now a PhD graduate associate professor in the field of English language teaching ELT. He has 20 years of teaching experience at all levels of education, including primary schools, secondary schools, colleges and universities. He moved around Ethiopia as a teacher, including Maji in the South and Mankush Manbuk Gilgil Willis in Benin Shangul Gumu's regional state and later in Desi, Volo University, where he served as dean for almost three years of a large and busy college of social sciences and humanities, and later serving as director of community services and training before he was interested as vice president for academic affairs at Volo University. Now he is president of Debre Tabor University since February 2018. He is a man of passion, responsibility and commitment, always keen on working together with others for common goals and great public interests. May I request Dr. Enigagrin Gosho to kindly address the gathering. I think he needs to unmute himself. Greetings from Dr. Uh, Tower University. I am Andagagarin Gasho, uh, President of Dr. Tower University. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, Abertabo University, Ethiopia, is delighted to be an academic partner of the Second International Conference on Resilience for Sustainability, Revisiting Management Practices and Strategizing for the Future, organized by the School of Management and Liberal Studies, the North Cape University, uh, Gurugram, India, held on March 26, 2021. The Tower University and the North Cape University uh, have come together to work in various areas, such as organizing virtual conferences, presentation of selected research findings in the mutuality organized online conferences, publication of selected papers in Scopus indexed journals, and certification of presenters of the workshop organized by both universities. The Baltimore University is a young higher learning institution founded in a historically rich and ancient political capital of Ethiopia since 2011 with the aim and vision of development of the country. DTU is changing open, leading the way with new ideas and motivations. Within the last eight years, 
it has been able to launch more than 50 graduate and undergraduate programs in major areas of agriculture, technology, health and medicine, natural sciences, social sciences and humanities, business and economics. The university is extensively involved in planning futuristic and innovative curriculum and focuses on regular adaptation as per the industry requirements. In line with what the university aims to achieve, the, the NIC 2021 has acted as an appropriate platform for interaction of young minds with experienced expertise of academicians, professors and researchers across numerous areas working on building sustainable management practices. In the modern age, many contemporary management ideas come to practice and organize into operational management and human resource management techniques. Among the operational management techniques, tool, total quality management, just in time, integrated computer-based technology, and supply chain partnership concepts were stated. While the human resource aspect were team-based working, empowerment and learning culture. I believe that the successful exploitation of each practice were measured by the extent to which it had met the company's objectives on three fronts. These are increasing quality, reducing costs, and certainly improving responsiveness. Although there are several ways to implement good management policies, I'm going to highlight the ones I feel are more relevant. Some of them, and I advise you to, to do the same. One is economic incentive for everyone. Managers should not be the only ones with extra pace. Don't underestimate how much financial incentives can motivate the rest of the workers. Just make sure they deserve it. Two, give the regular meaningful feedback. Employees always respond better to a manager that takes its time to, to provide useful feedback. Even if it is negative, it shows that they care about their work. Certainly, employees are also individuals. Show them respect. To put it simply, do not treat your employees like rubbish. An employee that feels respected will do its best to correspond to that respect. Fourth, managers must train. Learning does not stop with a degree. Make sure you keep training your managers. New problems require new skills. Support your employees. Let your employees know you are there for them when they need it. I assure you that they will remember it. Number six, acknowledge the employee's emotions. You must understand that workers have feelings and how to deal with them. They are people, not machines. Number seven, leadership by example. Practice what you, you preach. Managers who act in ways that the employees do not respect, like hypocrisy, will find its employees unmotivated. Number eight, keep up with new technologies and changes. You need to stay informed regarding the new technologies available to your organization. If you want to stay competitive, upgrade or die. Simple as that. And finally, heartiest congratulations to the School of Management and Liberal Studies, the Neuroscopic University, its management and also faculty. Thank you very much. President, the Brotawa University, Ethiopia. Very warm greetings from uh, Thank you so much, sir, for the words of pragmatism and veneration. We are thankful to all our esteemed guests for taking the time out of their busy schedule to attend the conference inaugural. Now may I request the head of the department, School of Management and Liberal Studies, Professor Swanji Tarora, to kindly give the vote of thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Priyanka. 
uh, dear all, uh, conferences offer a great way to connect with great minds and work together to make the business world a better place. With this, it is my great pleasure to express on behalf of the North Cap University, uh, Gurgaon, and on my own behalf, um, a deep appreciation for support and encouragement provided by all the individuals and institutions. The organization of such an event is a result of close cooperation and hard work among several institutions and individuals. So first of all, I would like to thank our respected Pro Chancellor Sir, Professor Prem Rath for allowing School of Management to host such a conference. I must say that the incredible leadership, timely and proper advice, and the freedom in decision making provided to me by, uh, by uh, our respected Pro Chancellor Sir have been indispensable for me to work on this conference. I would also like to thank very esteemed Dr. M. S. Sham Sundar, senior most advisor NAC, and our, and our respected chief guest for the occasion for accepting our invitation and sparing his valuable time and showering us with his knowledgeable and wiser words. I also wish to express my gratitude to guest to our guest of honor, Colonel Vankat, Director FDC AICTE, for giving excellent coverage to his ideas on resilience and sustainability. Equally important, I, I acknowledge with, the, with gratitude the support we received from our collaborating universities, University of Reserve Valley, Canada, Namdi University, Nigeria, Debre Tabor University, Ethiopia, who have actively contributed to make this conference meaningful. A, a warm thanks to our respected collaborators and esteemed dignitaries, Professor, uh, uh, respected Professor Sham, Sham Vyasa, Professor Emma, Dr. Geshaw, Professor Bonu, who have given their extended support in organizing this particular inaugural session and helping us and guiding us all the way during uh, the complete process. Moreover, School of Management has been fortunate enough to be backed by a team of very motiv motivated and dedicated colleagues who know their jobs and are result oriented. I cannot thank everyone enough for their involvement and their willingness to complete tasks beyond their comfort, comfort zone. I, I thank uh, our conference organizers, Dr. Neha, Dr. Deegha, Dr. Mansi, Dr. Priyanka, Dr. Preeti for their hard work to make this uh, inaugural and this complete uh, event successful. I also thank uh, dele uh, delegates from national and international uh, universities who, have, who are participating in the conference and our student volunteers without which this conference would have not been possible. Thank you. Thank you so much all. Thank you so much, ma'am. I would also like to thank our industry partner, MET24, for sponsoring the event. Now I request all the paper presenters to proceed towards the concurrent technical session. Kindly join the meeting links according to your tracks. Thank you. I would like uh, to request all of you to please switch the camera for group photograph. Kindly switch on the camera so that we can have a good photograph.
Thank you so Thank much, you. everyone. Now let us proceed towards the concurrent technical session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Meeting. Right, sir. Sir, uh, your voice is not audible.